Shalom. Praise the Lord, church. Oh, boy. I need y'all to wake up this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on. Has the Lord been good to you? You ought to clap your hands and open your mouth and just tell them thank you. Come on. The Bible says, oh, clap your hands. Oh, you people. Shout out to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Listen, we're going to have this little bit church early this morning. Come on. Tell somebody. Say, God is great and greatly to be praised. Now, that's the wrong label. Find somebody else and tell them God is great. Listen. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
And we are rejoicing because we are glad in it. Because when we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, how many know it's enough for us to shout hallelujah? We thank God for saving us. We come to give God the glory on this day. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Has not God been good? Has not God been kind? Has not God made a way for you? Well, you don't mind giving God your best praise on the day. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. Hey. I come to do my dance. 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 I come to lift him up. I come to lift him up. Will you help me lift him? Help me lift him up. I come to leave for joy. I come to leave for joy. I come to leave for joy. Everybody say, leave, 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 leave. Oh, I need some folks to just don't mind. Just open up your mouth and say, leave, leave. Let me see you leave up there. Come on, say, leave, leave. One more time, say, leave, leave. Praise the Lord. We honor God on this day. Amen. When you think about how good God is, it's enough to make you want to leap. And if you can't leap, you can wave your hand. And if you ain't waving your hand, you can shout hallelujah, hallelujah. to the King of kings and Lord of lords. We say good morning on the day. What a blessing it is to be in worship one more time. To all of those who are streaming, to all of you who are in the sanctuary, it's just a good day to give God praise. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, when we think about your goodness and all you have done, all we can really do is say thank you. We thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for being so faithful, so loving, so gracious, and so kind. We simply pray that you bless this worship experience to your glory. Blow afresh on each of us and blow on your preached word and let it fall on good ground that we might give you the glory and give you honor in our daily life. In Jesus' name we pray and give you glory. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Good morning and shalom. Good morning. Our scripture reading for this morning can be found in the Gospel of Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 28 to 36. Again, that's the Gospel of Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 28 to 36. When you found your place, if you could respond by saying, Praise the Lord. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James and went to the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glittering. And behold, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Then it happened, as they were parting from him, that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. When the voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone. But they kept quiet and told no one in those days any of the things they had seen. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God, and I do believe that is true. The grass withers, 
the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Good morning and shalom. Will you stand with us as we sing our hymn of worship? Glory to his name.
the blood. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Amen. Amen. Truly, truly, we have a reason to sing glory to his name. How many of you are thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah, that we have been bought with the price. That Jesus, our Savior, finished the work. He completed the work for our salvation down at the cross. And for that reason, we have reason to sing glory to his name. How many know that's a wonderful name? That's a precious name. We got victory in that name. Well, if you got the victory, you ought to show some signs on this morning. We sing glory to his marvelous name. At that name, yeah, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ, bless that wonderful name. His Lord, we honor God on this day. We, we truly want to give him glory. We come to give him glory. He's the only one worthy of all of the glory. And we bless his name. We honor God on today. We, in this service, we are so delighted and so blessed to also be able to celebrate our rich heritage and history. This is the last Sunday of Black History Month. But of course, we know that every day is a great day to celebrate our, our history. Amen. So on today, we're going to be blessed with a special tribute. We want to receive that at this time. Let's say amen and give God praise for how he's kept us and for our history on the day. While black history is to be celebrated each and every day, the month of February is a time for us to remember and pay special tribute to those who have paved the way or made an impact in our community. Today, Shalom Church City of Peace would like to honor the following four people for their many years of visionary guidance, exceptional leadership, and unconditional commitment and service. We've all been blessed by their work in our community and servant leadership. Reverend J.C. Bonner IV. Reverend Bonner, a native of Nashville, Tennessee, graduated from Knoxville College and then went on to attend the Interdenominational Theological Center at Morehouse College where he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology. Following his father's footsteps, he too became the pastor for Westside Missionary Baptist Church in Chattanooga where he served in the pulpit for 26 years. In October of 1989, he was elected the pastor of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church in St. Louis, Missouri. It was at Pleasant Green that he started a substance abuse ministry, hosted a weekly broadcast, and implemented multiple programs and ministries within the church that focused on youth training, evangelism, community outreach, and Bible-focused teaching. Reverend Bonner continued to inspire church members and impact the community until his retirement in 2017. He has poured into preachers, church members, and others over the years and continues to share his wisdom and knowledge as God continues to bless him. Minister Ethel M. Bindham. Minister Bindham answered her call to preaching under the leadership of Dr. F. James Clark at Shalom Church in 1996 and was ordained in 2003. She currently serves as the director of the Office of Community Engagement for St. Louis County Executive Sam Page and has served in this role for nearly eight years. Minister Bindham is no stranger to working with our local, state, and national government. She spent eight years as the director of the St. Louis Region's Office of Secretary of State, had an active role in the first election of President Barack Obama, was the 2020 St. Louis County Census Coordinator, producing a 75% participation of the county, which topped both the city and the state. She's participated in numerous federal, state, and local campaigns and ran a statewide voter registration initiative. Minister Bindham is also the founder of the Identity Change Movement, which seeks to motivate and elevate the African American community. Reverend Donald Hunter. Reverend Hunter, a product of St. Louis, 
graduate of Western Bible College and Concordia Lutheran Seminary, began serving as a pastor with the First Baptist Church of Maplewood in 1965. In 1977, he became the pastor of New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church, growing its membership by 296 people within the first two months. During his 50 years in ministry, he not only has received numerous honors and merits, but he also developed a continuing education program for black churchmen, established numerous programs and ministries at New Sunny Mount, including a summer youth academy that serves over 100 plus children each year from preschool to eighth grade. He is also recognized as an accomplished music composer, playwright, pianist, and organist. Reverend Hunter retired from pastoral leadership in 2015, but never from ministry to the people of God. His ministry was one founded on the love of God and the love for humanity. His preaching, teaching, and counseling are uncompromised and unsurpassed as ministries of the church and in service to the community. Reverend Hunter's motto is, It's nice to be nice, but it's nicer when others think that you're nice. Reverend Muriel L. Johnson. Reverend Johnson is a native of Biloxi, Mississippi, where her father was stationed in the Air Force. She graduated from high school in Brooklyn, New York, obtained her Bachelor of Science in Urban Education from the then Harris Stowe State College, and her Master of Divinity degree from Eden Theological Seminary. Reverend Johnson is an ordained American Baptist minister who accepted her call into ministry in 1989. She made history when she became the first woman licensed by Mount Zion Baptist Church in Madison, Wisconsin, and when she became the first African American to serve as a regional associate minister for the American Baptist Churches of the Great River Region, a role she has served in for the last 17 years. In this position, she provides support for 90 culturally diverse congregations in Missouri and Southern Illinois. Her ministry charge is to challenge, assist, represent, and equip congregations and clergy as we live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Reverend Johnson's love for God and commitment to Jesus Christ are evident in her day-to-day -day witnessing. She is a praying woman who cares deeply about the spiritual, physical, and mental health of the communities, congregation, and clergy. Reverend J.C. Bonner IV, Minister Ethel M. Bindham, Reverend Donald Hunter, and Reverend Muriel L. Johnson. Shalom Church City of Peace, under the leadership of Pastor Dr. F. James Clark, thanks you for your many years of visionary guidance, exceptional leadership, and unconditional commitment and service. We have all been blessed by your work in our community and servant leadership. You are Black History. You our black history. Come on church, really, let's show some love for these history makers. We honor you on the day. Come on, let's give God praise for these history makers. What a blessing, we honor God. And we honor your service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. Praise God. We honor God. And again, we honor you, Pastor Bonner, Minister Bindham, Reverend Donald Hunter. Certainly, Reverend Muriel Johnson. Uh, praise the Lord. Get this picture. Yeah. My God. Again, we thank God. Amen. We live in a world when 
And they are trying to silence our educators from teaching black history. Well, on today, we are so glad to be in the presence of black history. And if they don't honor our history, we know how to honor our history. Amen. Black history is world history. And we thank God for how he has kept us as a people through dangers seen and unseen. As we're preparing now to transition to prayer, our minister's going to come and share our prayer concerns for the week. How many know we serve a prayer hearing God? Our God is faithful. And what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Why don't you come at this time? morning and shalom. Family, how many of you know that prayer still works? Amen. Amen. The Bible says that we ought to pray without ceasing. We want you to know that we have received the prayer concerns that have come in by phone, by email, and we're so thankful for our leaders and our prayer team who is lifting our families up in prayer each and every week. We want to lift the, the families who are in bereavement. Our prayers are with Kathy Thorpe, in the passing of her sister, Sheila Thorpe. James Petty Jr. and Sherelle in the passing of his father, James Petty Sr., who is also the grandfather of Jalen and Peyton. Lee Anthony Bartley, Bartlett, I'm sorry, Sr., in the passing of his son, Lee Aaron Bartlett, who is also the brother of Lee Anthony Jr. and the grandson of Minister Shirley Bartlett, and the nephew of Robin Loving and Eric Bartlett. Rita Jones and Anita Cowens and Alan Butler in the passing of their cousin, James Overton Jr. Valletta and Arthur Cole in the passing of her brother, Jerome Rogers, who is also the uncle of Angelique and Justin Cole. Tritobia and Adrian Rose Jones and the Pleasant Grove Church family in the passing of their pastor, Bishop Courtney Allen Jones, who is son and beloved brother of the Shalom Church City of Peace. As always, our prayers are with our pastor, his wife, Sister Cheryl, and his family, along with the entire Shalom Church City of Peace family. Lastly, if you are here in the building or you are watching by live stream today and you know not this Christ of whom we sing and we preach, we extend this invitation to you. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way. And so we invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. The Bible says if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Maybe you know that Jesus is the way and you have drifted away. This is your invitation to come back to Jesus. We invite you to join our fellowship here at the Shalom Church City of Peace under the leadership of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark. Our information is on the screen. Please give us a call that we may celebrate your decision with you today. Now our choir is going to lead us in song, after which we will go to God in prayer. Amen. The Lord is the wonder. In my soul, in my soul today, oh, he helps me every step of the way. Oh, thank you, Lord. Whatever the need is, God will supply. Whenever I call him, he's right by. My side, I said, The Lord show is a wonder in my 
our problems, our anxieties, wars and rumors of war, racial strife, voting problems, so many things, Lord. Seems like there's trouble on every side. But who do you say we are, Lord? We say thank you for your word, which confirms us and conditions us and gives us direction. You say that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. You say that you can do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can think of or ask. You tell us, Lord, that all we need to do is call on you and that you hear and answer us from your holy hill. Why is it, Lord, that we're so anxious at times, but you say that we're precious in your sight? You understand us. You're a man acquainted with sorrow. You know all about us. You knew us before we were born, Lord. Nothing that's going on right now is new to you because you created the universe. So all we need to do, Lord, is to look to the hills from which cometh our help and understand and know that our help comes from you. That, Lord, all we need to do is be bold and courageous and you will give us what we stand in need of to get us to the places we need to go, to be the people that you say that we are. We have such a great cloud of witnesses around us, Lord. We stand on the shoulders of greatness. We have so many ancestors, Lord, that have poured into us and prayed for us. So all we need to do, Lord, is to walk by faith and not by sight. Keep our eyes stayed on you. Know, Lord, that you are the author and finisher of our faith, and nothing that happens under the sun is done without your knowledge or without your permission. So we pray, Father God, for those that are experiencing bereavement, because we know to be absent from the body is to be present with you. We pray that you would encourage those families, Lord, and allow the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, abide, and keep them doing this their hour of need. We pray, Father God, for those who are sick and shut in. We ask that you would continue to heal them and all of their affirmities. Father God, we pray for our pastor, asking that you would continue to strengthen and keep him as he shepherds your people. We pray, Father God, for his family, asking, Father God, that you would continue to meet them at their every place of need. And Father, we lift ourselves before you, knowing that you're able to do more than we can never think of or ask that all of our words are interceded on our behalf with the Holy Spirit with moanings and groanings, so we need not be worried about what we say. Father God, we will watch, we will pray, and we will hope, and we will continue to lift you up. And we pray for our children, Lord, 
that we can continue to encourage them because they are the leaders who will go forward in your name. These and all things we pray in your mighty, mighty son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He takes me
bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. It certainly is good to be here on today. God is a good God. He's worthy. Worthy to be praised. We are grateful to have this privilege granted to us again today that we can worship one with the other and uh, make a public announcement about the goodness of God. We celebrate our honorees today. Uh, uh, if, I, if I knew to do more, I would do it. Uh, these people have been so instrumental in our community and uh, have poured into people like myself and it's just the thing to do. Uh, it's not extra. Yeah, you don't go out of your way to honor people who have blessed your life and the life of so many other. And so the lesson today is for us to learn that when people have been a blessing to you, that you not only let them know, but then you pass it on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Reverend Draper and Reverend Bostic are present with us today, and we are grateful for, for them as well. Muriel Johnson, Bishop Johnson, is not here. She's here. She's streaming live with us. Uh, but we honor the work that she has done as well. So again, let us put our hands together and... Uh, First Corinthians 11, uh, 23 to 26, it reads, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of God, I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. You may be seated. Won't we'll talk about table fellowship for the time we have left together. Uh, table fellowship. This is a uh, just a momentary break in our faith series, but I want to talk about table fellowship we come to the table today and there are some things that have changed about the 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 process or how we do it however the product has not changed and uh want to move in that direction that that today uh is uh the day that we focus on the lord's supper and how the Lord Jesus used his ministry as a sign and symbol of commonality with brothers and sisters, as well as that which gives the church her, her identity. That the church's identity comes from the things that the Lord Jesus in his life did. That the church can never understand itself in isolation it can only understand its role and function, its meaning and mission in relations to others. Without Christ, there is no church, and without Christ, there is no mission for the church. Christ's mission is not because of the church. The church has a mission because of Christ. Yeah, the church has no light in and of itself. 
the light that is reflected from the face of the church is Christ. Therefore, to come to the table, brothers and sisters, is an opportunity for the church to reflect on the life of Jesus Christ, the many liberating moments he shared with others and his selfless sacrifice on the cross for the hope of reconciliation and to bring the world back to God. And therefore, when we share together, we do so in remembrance of him. Not to be confused, there are many names that are given to what we do in this celebration, this historical celebration. And the Lord's Supper is uh, a name, Holy Communion is another. The Eucharist is, is yet another. And the Eucharist literally uh, means thanksgiving that we are to live Eucharistic lives, lives of thanksgiving, that we live in, uh, to live moving from resentment to gratitude, uh, that, that this is meaningful. There is this closing stanza in the uh, song that we all know, Amazing Grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. Yeah. And so we thank God today that we are witnesses of his grace and of his mercy, yeah. of his love, of his amazing grace. Yeah, I said a, a witness to. Yeah, somebody at some point may have told you about it, but you've lived long enough to experience it for yourself. Amazing grace. <laughs> I'll let that sink in for about three more seconds. Amazing grace. <laughs> talking about being in your right mind. Amazing grace. Just the thought of being saved by his grace is enough to make you feel better. However you may have been feeling when you got here today, uh, just to start thinking about how amazing his grace is. It, it summons a response. And you and I both know that he, he good to everybody, I mean, but he, he makes his blessings toward you so personal until you, until you have to personalize it. It's, it's, it's not that you're closing somebody else out, but while they praising him, they're not, they not the only one that got something to praise him for. Yeah. All of us have experienced his amazing grace. This is going, this is going to sound so uh, fundamental, so basic, so, so primary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, tell your neighbor, the Lord keeps on blessing me. He just keeps on. He just keeps on. Keeps on. Hallelujah. He just keeps on. He just. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, well, yeah. He, he never, he never, he never enters into the lane of whether you deserve it. Yeah. He just, he just does it. 
and then and then he allows you to work it out whether or not you deserve it and our response to his grace and his goodness and his blessings has everything to do with our knowing we don't deserve it <laughs> but every time we turn around <laughs> that my pastor, Dr. Moses Javis, would refer to this moment of communal sharing as, as the love meal. That, that his keen insight into cultural injustices and his theological aptitude would bring us along to see that the life of Jesus was a life of love. Uh, that nothing heightened this more than in the farewell discourse of Jesus in John chapter 13. And I encourage you to read that when you have a chance. And in chapter 13 of, of John's gospel, there was this uh, foot washing exercise. Uh, and like a conductor leading the way, his theological common denominator would be that Jesus asked nothing of disciples that he wouldn't do himself. And that the underlining uh, understanding of the relationship that Jesus had with his disciples that he wanted them to walk away knowing that they were loved and that they were affirmed and that they were valued. And that the foot washing, please listen to this, and that the foot washing exercise was a, an exercise that removed the distance. That there, that there, if there existed any distance in the relationship that Jesus had with his disciples, that the, the exercise of foot washing was to remove the distance in their relationship, that there would be no daylight. Uh, uh, as they stood together to do, to do ministry. Uh, and so you can see why in that practice there was so much resistance. Uh, there was so much resistance from Peter. He did not want the Lord Jesus to wash his feet uh, uh, because of his ambition being other disciples, although they allowed it to happen, also had many questions about what it all meant. And what it meant and what it means is that to give your feet over to Jesus is really symbolic of giving one's life over to Jesus. That if I can trust you with my feet, I can trust you with my life. Yeah, because after all, th this is not a pedicure. No, this is, this is not a pedicure. Je Jesus, Jesus, in order to elevate them, de demotes himself. As he stoops low, he elevates them because that has been, that has been the rubric of his ministry since he came. He left his throne in glory. Yeah, that he might elevate us and put us back into the right relationship with his father. And so the foot washing exercise is really more than just washing feet. It is eliminating the distance. It is saying to Jesus, I, I trust you totally. And when Jesus gets through, when Jesus gets through with this, you got to read, it's a fascinating narrative. When Jesus gets through, he says, now that, that I have done this for you, the expectation is that you eliminate the distance from every other would-be disciple by also be, being willing to wash their feet. And so you become a foot-washing family. But it's bigger than foot-washing. Yeah, it is, it is humbly submitting yourself before the other that God might be glorified. 
And when he calls us to ministry, it's a calling to glorify God and not ourselves. Yeah. And the more we glorify God, the more we would want to glorify God because God is worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. Have you ever noticed that you are feeling physically not 100%? And the more you focus on not feeling 100%, the more you start to feel not 100%. But when you change the focus, when you shift your focus from yourself to the one who is to be glorified, all of a sudden we start to feel better. And the more we praise him, the more the atmosphere starts to shift because however bad you feeling, you may not be the only one in the house feeling that way. But the more we praise him, the more we want to praise him. And the more we praise him, the Holy Ghost allows us to know that he's worthy to be. Well, this is going to sound so fundamental, just so primary. This is going to sound, this is going to sound like, you know. Maybe I should find a better way to say what I'm going to say. But can I, can I ask you to just look around in the people around you, even those of you at home, and just, just, just go on and say it. God, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's worthy. I dare you to say it. I dare you. Even, even if you got your back against the wall in here today, you ought to just go on and say it because it'll help you to feel better. Because the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, when the enemy wants to steal your joy, what he does is get in the way of you trying to hear the word because the word will bring you joy but if you don't have word you don't have joy and then you have no strength to fight the enemy the enemy won't flee if you don't have strength and you don't have strength if you don't have word but once you start to hear the word and start to give glory to God you put the devil to flight. Somebody ought to open their mouth. Y'all tell somebody, I came to praise him. I came. Said so this is not an accident. This is not an accident. When you see me open my mouth and throw back my head and wave my hands and leap for joy, I'm doing this on purpose. This ain't no accident. I don't, I don't go to the grocery store on accident. I don't go to see my doctor by accident. And I didn't come into his house by accident. And since I'm in his house, listening to his word, listening to his songs, yeah, I want my body to reflect what I'm hearing in my spirit. I said he's worthy, he's worthy. I'm almost finished. He's worthy. I said he's worthy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know he's worthy. He's worthy. Woo. To be praised. <laughs> There's three quick things I want to give, and then we're coming to the table. Uh, and it lifted right out of right out of scripture. That when we talk about coming to the table, Paul shares these verses with us through scripture. That uh, we we start to rehearse it for a better understanding. So first, it's a it's a practice. Somebody say it's a practice. And a practice is something that we rep that we perform repeatedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and make it a habit. It's a, it's a, it's a drill, you know, uh, uh, in our tradition, 
most of the time it's practice on a first Sunday and not the fourth Sunday. So when we came together and organized as a fellowship on a fourth Sunday, that's when we had the meal and we just never shifted it. We never shifted to the uh, first Sunday because I, I heard him say as often as, as often as you do. You know, it's a matter of moving the theological furniture in one's thinking, in one's buildup. That as often as you do. So, so if we turned around and did this tomorrow, <laughs> we, we'd be, is that right? If, if we did this tomorrow, yeah, as often as you do, yeah, you do in remembrance of me. And, it, and if your often is once a year, it, the focus still doesn't change because it's in remembrance of me. Yeah, got to understand it ain't your supper. When, when, when we practice it, we got to know it ain't your supper. And so, and, and so, and so who, who's welcome to come to the table? Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Now, the, the table is not there for us to practice exclusion. We do that enough in our everyday practice. We've got the systems of men always stand in place to make sure that a certain kind never gets a chance to participate in what it means to be human. And so the church has got to learn how to guard herself against worldly practices that would close people out. Because it, 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 is, it, is, it is not our word that says whosoever will. It is the word of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so, and so this is when we talk about the table, all barriers are down. This is whosoever will. Let them come to the table, and we got to practice that. It's a, it's a practice. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're doing remembrance of me. You show forth the Lord's death till it comes. That the regular prayerful scriptural practice of this observance will really enrich the believer's life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if I can if I can practice being kind to you at the table and I ain't never seen nobody as long as I've been in the church stay at the table we partake of the table and then we on to the next thing and so while we are on our way to the next thing we take the practice with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. What practice? The, the, the practice of being kind yes, to sir. others. So not only is it a practice, it's also a proclamation. And in the proclamation, we show forth the, the Lord's death until he comes. So what, hap what happened in the processes of the Lord's death? Well, he, he met the resistance of those who did not want humanity to be whole. And so for doctors, they were threatened because he was a healer. For, for, for those who were the managers of the economy, they got intimidated because livestock ran down cliffs and pigs drowned. And they cared more about pigs and property than they did people. And so the proclamation of the Lord Jesus is a dangerous proclamation because it invites others to live toward their God-given talents and abilities. And not even the church wants that all the time because even the church gets selective about who can become a part of the church. 
And if you don't look like, and if you don't come from certain pedigrees, and if your family ain't one of the foundational families of the institution, you may have trouble belonging. But when you practice and you proclaim, you erase all of that. And you start to move like Jesus moved. You start to act like Jesus act. Hallelujah. You start to speak authoritatively like Jesus spoke. want their feet washed invitation to live at a level that's going to require I be filled with the Holy Spirit because no man can do these things unless the Spirit be with him <laughs> I better get on out of here I better, I better stop because, because we and as much as we try to walk in the lane of love like Jesus, as much as we try to proclaim that and practice it, there are moments when we just, when we just want to give the devil a day. Somebody, somebody said, well, praise the Lord. I, ain't, I don't feel like, I don't, I ain't, not today. <laughs> you ever felt like that? that yeah, I am. Uh-uh. I, I, I'm loving being mean today. That you, you, you you on your job, you on your job, and and grandma said you got up on the wrong side of the bed, and people telling you good morning, good morning, and and they can tell that you get ready to say something that ain't so good, and they hurry up and scurry away from you before you mess up their day. And at the end of the day, we are all repentant and everything, Lord. I... But the devil has already used us. But if we can keep in our mind that it's proclamation, our lifestyle is a proclamation of what's practiced at the table. What I practice at the table is when I ought to practice and proclaim in the public square. And if I got enough word in me, I have then enough strength of the spirit to resist the enemy. And when I can resist him, he'll flee. Three more minutes and we come into the table. It's not only a practice and a proclamation, but it's a prophecy. Uh, we'll do this until, until the Lord's return. Even Jesus says he won't drink of the fruit of the vine until he does so in the kingdom. And so a, a lifestyle of living from the doing remembrance of me is a lifestyle that is always looking forward. And it's a lifestyle that proclaims that things as they are right now shall not always be. And so we look at Ukraine and we look at the mean spirited operation of President Putin. And we look at how the World leaders are situating themselves as being authoritative. As if, as if, and this ought to blow your mind, as if they are God themselves. And that same discipline operates in our communities as well, in our country. Though 
those that stand against critical race theory, who stand for book banding. And they, they're, not, they're not wise in my opinion. These are not wise people because the way you get people to read something is tell them not to read it. that they have really been used as an instrument to get people to read about our, our heroes and sheroes. Those persons who had strength of character to keep moving forward without stopping. We honored such people today. All have had reason to stop because when you are on the battlefield, that's when your criticism is, is most rendered. And it has a way of falling on your ears. And the first thing that the enemy wants you to do is to give up in the good work that you're doing. But you're doing a good work. You're doing a good work. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. And even if you can't help everybody, your aim ought to be Somebody, if I can help somebody. Yeah, maybe you tried to help everybody and it didn't work. So change your focus. Start to want to help somebody. That would be your practice. That would be your proclamation. That ought to be your prophecy. That if I can help somebody, then my living won't be in vain. And I don't want my living to be in vain. And so I come to the table renewed today. I come revived. I come refreshed. I come with a new attitude. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care how you treat me. No, how you treat me ain't on me. How I treat you is what I'm going to have to answer for. And, and, I, and, and if I were you, I ask God to, to give me something to help me to stand the storm. Hallelujah. Stand the storm because life is, is full of swift transitions. And, and I don't want my work, hallelujah, to be in vain. We coming to the table but I want you to know that this God we serve is a good God. He instituted the table for us to be in fellowship with each other. Yeah, that nobody was created to be in isolation. Yeah, you may be able to do it one week, another week, and uh, maybe another week, but when them weeks start to pile up like it has in COVID, something starts to to happen in our thinking. We don't, we don't, we don't have people that we can uh, run our ideas through. And when you're talking to yourself, that ain't a good partner. Cause, cause, Cause yourself gonna agree with whatever you wanna do. And before you, before you know it, you out there in no man's land with no way to return. But when you come to the table, you see brothers and sisters of kindred mind and spirit. Hallelujah. You get a chance to uh, catch up with them later after you leave the table and ask them about their family. Yeah, how's your health? How's your well-being? Yeah, and they get a chance to talk back to you. Yeah, it's a fellowship. Hallelujah. Fellowship. Fellowship. Oh, what a fellowship. What a, what a, what a joy divine. Hallelujah. And collectively, we, we start leaning. I got to close this, I gotta, but, but I need to do one more thing with you. Uh, Uh, with you and for you already this morning. Go ahead, just let's do this exercise. Go ahead, just tell them three things.
Do, do, you, do you hear me? Do you? Now listen, don't be, don't be sophisticated and don't participate. Go on and tell at least three things. Go on and share. And when you get through, go on and praise him. This is what happens in fellowship. You, you get a chance to tell somebody about how good God has been. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way, gave us our health and strength. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Yeah, if I was, if I was cranking this thing up, I'd ask you, ain't he all right? Yeah, didn't he wake us up this morning? Yeah, yeah do you feel all right? You don't know like I know, you don't. You know. now, how good God is, man. tell somebody I can finish that myself I can, I can finish that myself you don't know yeah how he picked us up and turned us around all right all right I just that was just down in my spirit yeah to the table but just one more time just tell somebody I'm glad I'm saved I'm glad I'm I'm saved today I'm saved I'm saved and I'm not ashamed I'm not ashamed I'll praise him anywhere I'll shout anywhere oh Lord and Lord yeah, yeah. Doors of the church are open. I better do this. Doors of the church are open. If you're present today and you don't know him, as Lord and Savior, I want you to come. I want you to come. If you've not been baptized, this invitation is for you. Maybe you say, I've been baptized, but I need church home. I need a church home. I need to be in a place where the word of God is. Uh, bless your heart, man. Don't do that to me. Will somebody treat him like you do? Nah. Might be somebody else. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. yeah. Will uh will will one of you will one of you please? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 shifted and they still mesmerized by that word. See that word. That word of Mesha. Maybe somebody else is present this morning. And there's a difference between being in the building and being in the body. 
And so many people have made it a habit to be in the building, but they're not in the body. And the building is not going to transport you from time into eternity. You got to be in the body. Good to see you, friend. If you're not in the body of Christ, this is what this is about. If you're not in the body of Christ, by way of confession, confess by your mouth, believe in your heart. God raised Jesus from the dead. If you haven't done that, then this invitation is for you. It's for you. Even for those of you just looking on, it's for you. I'm telling you now, I don't want to be in heaven by myself. I mean, I'll, I'll endure just me and God. I'll, I'll make it work. But I'm going to want some of you all with me. In fact, I'm going to want all of you with me. Yeah. And so if you're here and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, then I'm asking you to come. Just get up from where you are and make your way. Maybe you've been baptized and you, and you just, you, you need a church home. You need covering, covering, covering. It's what the first family understood they needed after they were disobedient. They were left without covering. All of us need covering. Turn to your neighbor one more time and just ask him, are we waiting on you? Are we waiting on you? Are we waiting on you? Did God speak to you? Them. They don't have to be afraid of this moment because you can let them know I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. Yeah. Can, can we do one stanza of this? A week. out communion and you dig in the tray and get your wafer and uh, and then you dig and get your wine and uh, we we didn't even know we we didn't know that people were touching about five six seven different wafers and and their finger was slipping into the juice we didn't know you see how God has kept us we we just just passing yeah. And so I doubt, I doubt now if we ever go back to how it was. So now when we pass it out, now you gotta open your own. Yeah, and, and I, I I heard all y'all saying I like it like that. I Yes, Lord. So and our chairman of Deacon has come up with a uh, way of how we serve and so these days whatever my leadership comes up with I'm with it 
I'm, I'm with it because as I'm moving over, I need for them to move up so that we can move on. Uh-huh. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. So whether I like it or not, whether I like how it look, I'm, I'm silent about it because they're going to have to leave. They're going to have to leave. So here we are again at the table. Yeah, while I'm at the table, I'm loving everybody. I just need to take some of this with me in places that are not so loving. Yeah. Father, thank you for this opportunity. Bless all under the sound of my voice. Yeah. Let us do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. What's our direction, Brother Chef? Good morning, everyone. So this time, in the middle, you will have the opportunity to walk up just like your far right and your far left to get your communion. And so you got to start from the beginning because they don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're going to have to share what the process is. Just okay. Say yes. yeah, yeah. okay, okay. So the process is for communion for the folks that are in the middle. Besides the mothers and the ones that's not able to come up, everyone will have the opportunity to walk up front to get your communion in this middle section, just like we do on the far right as well as my far left. All right. Amen. Direction will be given also by the deacons. Uh, and I just want to add, I ain't correcting him. I, I just, I just want to add. If, if you find that the deacons can't give directions, don't be discouraged because we got ushers and that's their ministry. All right, all things work together. All things work together. So, so our wonderful ushers, just be, be on guard. If the deacons look like they don't know what they're doing, don't get mad. Just, don't, don't, just, just pat them on the shoulder, something like that. And just say, I got this. Just, you know, just, I, I got this. Yeah. We ready? Okay. All right. So what, what, what's the first move? What's the, that first move that I passed the tray out? That, that, okay. All right. Yeah. See, see, this is just like when the family comes together at the table. You have these kind of conversations. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, what did your teacher say today? You know, how, how was school? Yeah. All right, body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Oh, look at you. Look at you Africans today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How you feeling? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. We're going to sing in a minute. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, look at you. Man, the Lord is using you too. Yeah. You, you let them use you, huh? Oh, he's sure using me. He's sure using me. Yes, Lord. All right. Cause what about the middle section? They come in last. They come in last. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 All right. Bring that. From day to day. Let's sing it together, the blood. 
just not, it's, it's not even lawful to have this kind of gift in the house and not hear from him. It, that's not, that's not, that's not lawful. That's not lawful. Yeah, that's against the law. That's what, that's what, that's what that means. Yeah, that's what that means. Yeah. So, come on, we can carry on. We can carry on. Yeah, we can carry on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's our illustrious chairman. Yeah. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, no mercy. I see all I have needed your hand that's it, that's has it. provided <laughs> great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness. Every day I wake up in the morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hand has provided. Great thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness oh Lord unto me church huh? and for people who love the club it ain't nothing like church yeah. sometimes it's the same people yeah. and, and, and people who know how to club you ought to be shaming yourself to come to church and don't church like your club is that right I just wouldn't give the devil more of myself than I'm willing to give to the Lord. And once you show enough give yourself to the Lord, he'll change your dance. You ain't got to stop dancing. He'll just change it. Yeah. Yeah, in order to sing like he and CJ and them, you got to have something other in you that's been transformed. You don't just wake up singing stuff like that, not unless you, you, there's some other track stuff. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that great as our faithfulness comes from understanding. That's all I'm saying. All I have needed, thy hand have provided. <laughs> now we getting ready to have too much fun. We got to get out of here. Yeah. Did we miss anybody? We did. Okay. All right. Okay. I sure have missed seeing some of you all. So if I act like I hadn't seen you, it's cause I haven't. <laughs> yeah, cause I haven't. And uh, my pastoral ability, my pastoral care doesn't lend itself for me to act like a statue. You gotta go somewhere else for that. No, 
that uh, that which the Lord has placed in my care, I care for. Yeah, I care for. So I'm happy to see you. Yes, Lord. All right. So we can start peeling. <laughs> If you, if you anything like me, it's going to take a while. So you, you, but we're going to get there. We, yeah. See, and, and if you peel and your bread is still at the top, he'll understand. Let's eat together. Let, let's drink together. Let's praise God together. Amen. Yeah. Some people are still stuck, huh? That's all right. We're going it's a practice. We're going to practice. We're going to practice. Let's prepare to give this offering time. It's offering time. Amen. Yeah, Brother Williams, where'd he go? Where'd Jesse go? Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. And the 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 song that went all over the country on our first CD, uh, We Praise Your Name, is written by. It's uh, offering time, Shalom. And even though we can't be in person, there are still ways we can give while worshiping virtually. You may call the office at 314 314- 653-2300. Drop off or mail your check to the church at 5491 North Highway 67, Florissant, Missouri 63034. Through Realm via the church website at www.shalomccop.org. Or you may text SCCOP to 73256.